Faker and T1 are world champions. This is not a drill. This is not me reliving the glory days. Faker is now a four-time world champion, the only player in the history of League of Legends to ever achieve that title. It's been six long years of heartbreak, rotating teammates, mounting pressure and injuries, but none of that really matters right now. The greatest player to ever touch League of Legends is back on top. Here's how it happened. Before we get into today's video, I want to thank our sponsor, Shopify. You know how you always hear about how excited people get about braving the cold and the crowds to get the best deals on Black Friday? Yeah, me neither. This holiday season, make sure that your business is able to manage all of that Black Friday, Cyber Monday traffic by running your store with Shopify. It's quick, it's easy to use, and most importantly, absolutely free to get started. In 2022, 52 million consumers worldwide purchased from an independent brand powered by Shopify. Odds are you have purchased something from a store supported by them too. And in case you didn't know, we have our own merch line too, thanks in large part to Shopify and their easy to use commerce platform. So give yourself or a loved one the gift of some awesome esports merch. Or if you're ready to finally launch that dream business idea, check out the link in the description, shopify.com forward slash to score esports to start your free trial today. Now, go and watch the video. So as it turns out, the finals from last Sunday weren't even really that close. Entertaining? Sure. Satisfying? Definitely. But T1 looked a class above Weibo. Game 1 saw Faker give up first blood early on, but after the 10 minute mark, T1 hit Weibo with a nasty 1-2 combo, a perfect insect from Ona, followed up by a two-man Yone ult from Zeus. We'll see if T1 tries to go for an alternative play, just push mid, but it looks like Weibo isn't even going to give him the opportunity as Ona! Oh, there's a kick flash out! to be pushed into Faker, the flash forward, but the charm is going to miss. What? The Pierce doesn't land it, Shadow just walks it off. No worries there at all as Crisp is under the turret. They throw down yes. the but Zayas has found two with the ultimate light. Goes down so low, but isn't going to survive. Weiwei trying to get himself out of there, and the Shy is given up on. Weiwei running the wrong direction, but they at least get the dragon. And later, Carrier showed everyone what a devastating Renata Glasgow looks like. Could be in a bit of trouble here as Chris looks for it. The immediate cleanse does get out of the way. Nature's Cross isn't going to connect, but there is a twisted advance. Hostile takeover across everyone though, but the Shy is just gigantic. Goober trying to hop away. The Fates call the knockoffs. And meanwhile, Weiwei is going down. Baker collects it before falling down. Chris has to go though because he's so incredibly low. And Zayas is tearing them to shreds. The game ended with Zaya solo killing the Shy under his tier 3 turret and then basically three-shotting the turret afterwards. Game one of the finals. Nature's Grasp flying forward. Ona still has that GA. Oh. Remember, Chris going down so incredibly low. Zayas just executes the Shy up to the side and there is another one. This guy's Yone is just absurd. In game two, we had Ona on Nocturne and Faker on Silas. Not really the most contested champions throughout the tournament, but ones which they deployed to devastating effect. The Drake going down very, very low, and now the paranoia comes in. Faker looks for the Spear Rush, and he does find it. The hostile takeover is massive, as they get rid of Light immediately. Weiwei taken down for the double kill for Ona. Xiaohu now trying to get some damage in the back, and it does take down the Nocturne, but it's Chris fighting on the bottom side of the map, and Kumiuchi is going to cash in once again. In game three, we saw a juicy Bard ult from Carrier set up Faker Zakali to mow down Weibo. They know he's there. Yeah, he flashes in. He finds himself the charm on the four. and locks down his fellow ninja. Xiaohu now taking a whole lot of damage and Faker is in the shroud. He's toying with him. It's a double kill. What? Over. And back in again. It's a triple for Faker. Zayas is going to be out of block down the next one. Faker eventually goes down, but it's four for him and Carrier. 25 minutes in, Zaya showed us why he was the series MVP as he survived the goon squad until his team could arrive to win the team fight, the game, and the tournament. It's heartbreaking as now they take a magical journey over Zayas. He likes this one though, one versus three. He's absorbing so much, the Empress Divide. It comes in, but he's still alive. What? He's going on, Faker tidies up the first. Everyone's just exploding as Weiwei 
trying to get something done, but it does not matter. T1 are too strong. And with that, it was done. Faker lifted the Summoner's Cup above his head, the trophy that had evaded him since that crushing end of the SKT dynasty in 2017. He even got to silence the doubters, detractors, and demons with his iconic hush, and the crowd went wild. There is so much work that has gone into this, let alone the fact that every single part of them has been incredible. And T1 really <laughs> did silence them here today. The outpouring of emotion from around the world has been palpable. Outsiders to the league community might find it strange that people are pinching themselves over a strong team like T1 and the GOAT Faker actually winning worlds, but many are finding it hard to believe. In recent years, T1 have been consistently strong, but consistently fallen at the final hurdles. Their tournament records have been a string of second and third places. On Twitter, Hide On Words shared a transcript of T1's comms at the end of game three. You can see the realization begin to creep in after they win the final team fight. Zeus praising his teammates' hard work, Ona saying this is the tournament they dreamt of, then you have Faker asking why they're so good, and then just hitting them with a single nice right there at the end. It may seem cliche to say this, but this really was a team effort. There was no dead wood on T1 this tournament or this series. Every single member seemed to have their own moment that swung the tides of battle including Faker. The meme that's been floating around the past few years has been that Faker carried his rookie teammates and now it's their turn to help him. But if there's one thing these past few months have taught us, it's that Faker has been far from carried. As Riot Cassidy pointed out quite well on Twitter, the rookies may have come into their own, but Faker just continues to get more giga chad with time. And at no time was that more evident than at the end of the summer season. We spoke about this more extensively in last week's video, but less than four months ago, Faker was completely completely out of action with an injured arm. His team, who are all obviously incredible players, looked absolutely lost without him. They went 1-7 and seven in his absence and almost missed playoffs. There is no doubt in my mind that if Faker hadn't returned at that moment, T1 wouldn't have been good enough to make Worlds, definitely not good enough to make Finals, and certainly not good enough to win the whole thing. No chance at all. You might think that meme we just looked at is a little bit over the top, but honestly, it's a pretty accurate depiction of this year. And while 2023 will always be remembered as the year that Faker and T1 reclaimed their throne, it will also be looked back upon as the year T1 personally dismantled the LPL. At the end of it all, they went 11 wins and one loss against Chinese teams at Worlds this year, only dropping that single game to JDG in semi-finals. That is astounding. The LPL has been such a force in recent years. They've won the past three MSIs, and up until this year, a Chinese team had appeared in four out of the past five Worlds finals, winning three of them. So for T1 to end the tournament with a 91% win rate against that region, it's nuts. Last year's final was an all-Korean affair. This year, a Korean team has won yet again. Are we seeing the re-emergence of South Korea as a dominant force in League of Legends, or is T1 just an outlier? There's an argument for both, but I do think things are a little bit more unpredictable now, which can only be a good thing for the average viewer. And speaking of viewers, the viewership record was absolutely smashed. ESCharts.com reported that the 2023 World's Final was watched by a peak viewership of over 6.4 million people. That is comfortably a new League of Legends viewership record. It might even be an all-time esports record, and it's not even taking into account Chinese viewership. There's no denying it, this was an absolutely colossal finals, and probably quite a nice morale boost for the community after what's been a fairly rocky year in esports. So, what now for T1? Well, one of the first things they need to decide is what world skins they want. In a post-game conference, Zayo said Jace or Yone, Ona wants Lee Sin, Gumiushi would like Jinx, and Faker is undecided, but you know it's going to make millions either way. My guess is Azir. Interestingly, Kerry has said he wanted a Lux skin, but was told he actually couldn't have that because he technically didn't play Lux during the tournament. Perhaps Riot can turn a blind eye to that one, though. Will this T1 roster stay together? We will probably find out very soon. The contracts of Zeus, Gumiushi, and Kerry all expired yesterday, so the question is, will they and T1 want to keep this championship winning team together. Faker also said he has no plans to retire, so League fans everywhere can breathe a sigh of relief. And honestly, I would include Riot in that too. I'm sure they're glad he's not going anywhere anytime soon. T1 are also rumored to be signing Reckless. Yes, 
reckless as their academy supports. If that turns out to be true, trust me, we will be all over that because it honestly sounds like a fever dream. And T1 are also bringing back legendary head coach Coma to head the team. The 37-year-old was the linchpin of the SKT dynasty and a huge influence on Faker's early career. If the move does go ahead, it's going to be really fascinating to see whether or not they can continue to find glory all these years later. And yesterday, the president of South Korea even released a statement in which he personally congratulated T1. Translated and shared by journalist Ashley Kang, the president said T1 winning worlds had once again made South Korea renowned as the front-running country in esports. He said the players moved the South Korean citizens as well as people across the globe. Well, guys, I'm really not sure how to wrap this one up. We could sit here all day and just swap memories about Faker's journey on his way to winning this world's title. It's hard to find the right words to sum all of this up, but I think I found someone who did. A Reddit user shared a translation of comments made by Chinese commentator Wan Duo Duo during his final speech after the game, and I think they pretty much sum it all up. Congratulations to T1. Amidst the swirling snow and dazzling starlight, we witness a decade of heroic legacy. From SKT to T1, a saga penned by the hands of Lee Faker Sang Hyuk himself. This is more than a story of triumph. It's a symphony of heroism etched in the annals of time. For 10 years, many have aspired to surpass him, to defeat him. Some tasted fleeting success, yet he managed to stand unshaken throughout all those times. His presence, admirable and boundless. All right, some of you guys might remember that um, in the last couple of videos I did about Faker, I used a very specific phrase to kind of talk about his past or his past titles. Faker would be about to fight for his fourth world title ever, seven years after his last, 10 years after his first, 10 years after his first, seven years after his most recent. Yeah, I'm not trying to say that is like the most original phrase ever or that I could copyright that, but when I was watching the games, I heard this at the very end. It was seven years since their last, a decade since their first. I'm not saying anything. 